Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Eugene Gu, and today I want to discuss a video that many of you probably already saw. Uh, this video involves a student from Covington Catholic High School wearing a red MAGA cap, um, and he basically had a confrontation or standoff with a Native American elder right in front of the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, so this video sparked a national conversation about the role of social media, about white supremacy, and what constitutes the truth. Um, there was a huge reaction in the mainstream media to this video, uh, which is constantly evolving. Uh, and so I want to deconstruct as best as we can uh, using the available evidence that we have about what happened on that day, as well as deconstruct why the media reacted in the way that it did and why that response is continuing to evolve um, even to this day. Uh, so first, let's take a look at the video itself. So, after seeing that video, as you can imagine, it sparked a lot of outrage initially. Uh, everyone assumed that there was this, you know, kid in a racist uh, red MAGA hat who was uh, confronting and basically taunting this Native American elder. Uh, and many people had also assumed that it was Nick Sandman, uh, the kid with the MAGA hat, who was the one who walked up to the Native American elder while the Native American elder was playing his drum. Uh, and so, you know, all over the news, uh, everyone was angry at the Covington Catholic high school kids. Uh, then, after a day or so, uh, Nick Sandman's mother um, actually hired a uh, Republican public relations firm, uh, which completely changed the narrative 180 degrees, flipped it around, and now these students who were seen as the victimizers became the victims, and instead of the villains, they were considered to be the heroes. Um, and the reason why there was this very extreme switching of the narrative um, is because uh, Nick Sandman released a statement through the PR firm, uh, which stated that there were these um, four African-American black Israelites who were hurling insults at the Covington Catholic kids uh, as they were waiting at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial for their bus. Uh, they, they, they said that they were there at 4.30 p.m. and the bus was uh, supposed to pick them up around 5.30. Uh, and, and as they were waiting there at the bus stop, they were getting all these insults, you know, homophobic slurs, um, e even someone, one of the more outrageous statements was that they wanted to harvest the kids' organs. And, you know, to be honest, those four or five African-American black Israelites were pretty inflammatory. Uh, but not just to the Covington Catholic kids, but to everyone. They even called the Native Americans that, who were also having their own indigenous people's rally. They were saying that they were Uncle Tomahawks. They were saying, why do you eat buffalo meat? Uh, and when random passerbys uh, you know, came, came by their station, because these four or five uh, black Israelites had like uh, this tiny little black table and uh, a, a platform that they never really strayed away from. Um, and they were carrying this large poster. They were just basically, uh, they reminded me of the Westboro Baptist you know, people who just say outrageous things, trolling people, no matter who you are, it's nothing personal. They just say crazy stuff to get your attention, um, which is not right, uh, but it's not like they targeted anyone in particular. And they, of course, said a lot of crazy things uh, to these kids who are waiting at the uh, steps of the Lincoln Memorial as well. Um, and in particular, they were, they were uh, drawing attention to the fact that the kids were wearing the red MAGA hats, uh, which made the black Israelites even angrier than normal. Uh, and, um, and then what happened was that the kids uh, who were getting tired of the insults uh, thrown at them uh, by these black Israelites, and they were also hurling insults back. Uh, it, it was not just a one-sided confrontation. They were both, you know, saying a lot of mean things to each other. Um, but the kids had the idea to do a, a school spirit dance or sp like a school cheer uh, like they do at the pep rally. 
Um, and so they got permission from one of their adult chaperones um, and they were doing these cheers in order to try to drown out uh, all the derogatory comments from the black Israelites. Um, and then in the middle of uh, them doing these cheers, which to an outside observer looks like a bunch of kids uh, you know, in their red MAGA hats being really loud and, and in a coordinated way. You, it's not obvious to the normal person that it's a cheer. It looked like some kind of a coordinated you know, response or attack on these uh, outnumbered four or five black Israelites. Uh, and so while that was happening, that's when the, uh, the Native American elder, Nathan Phillips, and his entourage of like three or four people uh, kind of tried to intervene and separate this, this you know, confrontation between the two groups. He basically went in between the no man's land uh, and, and tried to defuse the situation by banging his drums. Um, and, but because the initial assumption from the first viral video was that uh, this, the student, Nick Sandman, was the one who approached the Native American, now we had information that it was a Native American person who approached the group. And so that was one you know, big piece of information that many of us did not know. Um, and then another piece of information is we didn't know that there was another group, the Black Israelites, who were instigating and making uh, derogatory comments uh, to those kids at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. So that was two pieces of information. Um, and then knowing that, when you look at the video again, you can see that it's not necessarily Nick Sandman, um, you know, staring down uh, Nathan Phillips in a very mean or condescending way, but uh, then people bought into the narrative that the Native American guy went up to Nick Sandman um, and kind of provoked him and Nick Sandman was just there kind of stoically standing there and trying to defuse the situation by not opening his mouth, not doing anything but maybe smiling. Uh, and so then because of this new narrative that kind of came to light uh, through the work of the PR firm, a lot of people, a lot of news organizations that initially denounced the Covington Catholic kids then walked back their story, uh, and now everyone was more sympathetic about uh, these Covington Catholic kids, despite the fact that they were there in their red manga hats laughing at this Native American gentleman. Uh, now everything was in a whole new context. Um, and it was in such a new context that, uh, you know, Donald Trump, the President of the United States, tweeted not once, but twice about the whole situation, offering sympathy for both Nick Sandman and the Covington Catholic kids. So on January 21st, he actually tweeted, um, looking like Nick Sandman and Covington Catholic students were treated unfairly with early judgments proving out to be false. Smeared by media. Not good, but making big comeback. New footage shows media was wrong about teens encounter with Native Americans at Tucker Carlson. So I guess he was watching Fox News at the time uh, and, and the anchor Tucker Carlson uh, said something about the Co Covington Catholic kids, which then got t uh, the attention of the President of the United States. And uh, this was on Martin Luther King's day, by the way, that he tweeted this. Uh, and then the next day, uh, Donald Trump tweeted, Nick Sandman and the students of Covington have become symbols of fake news and how evil it can be. They have captivated the attention of the world and I know they will use it for their good, maybe even to bring people together. It started off unpleasant, but can end in a dream. Uh, the the, the la last part of his sentence, that can end in a dream, almost evokes Martin Luther King's speech. Um, and this is the day after Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So uh, th that's kind of uh, disconcerting in and of itself, but unrelated to our discussion. So we'll just table that for the next time. Um, but basically what I want to do now is kind of fully deconstruct exactly what happened on that day. You know, we have so many people from the conservative side, from the liberal side, all having their own narratives because each side is only seeing a snippet, you know, one video clip here, one video clip there that supports their notion without seeing, there's like around two hours of uh, video evidence that you have to sort through to kind of get the full context of exactly what happened. And the exact truth is that is not necessarily very you know, black and white. There's, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Um, the truth is that the, these kids 
uh, from Covington Catholic are not completely innocent. Uh, they did a lot of things that were mocking this Native American gentleman, uh, which we will soon see. Um, and you know, the other truth is that they were there waiting at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, there was another group of protesters, the Black Israelites, who tried to provoke them. <laughs> they were provoking everyone, basically. Um, and uh, it is true that uh, the Native American uh, elder, Nathan Phillips, did try to intervene and, and uh, basically separate the two groups. And he did approach uh, the Covington Catholic kids slowly, but he did approach them. Um, so I kind of want to take a look first at, uh, you know, let's examine what happened before the incident with the black Israelites. Uh, then I want to see what happened during the incident of when Nathan Phillips, the Native American elder, walked into the MAGA crowd. Um, and then I want to kind of see immediately after the incident, like how did that confrontation and standoff resolve uh, so that we have the, uh, you know, before, during, and after to fully understand the full context of this story. Because it's not a, a cut and dry, simple story. Uh, it's complex and we need to kind of deconstruct it as best we can with the available evidence that we have without trying to just promote our own ideology. We have to be objective and take a look at the evidence. So first, let's take a look at the black Israelites. Get rid of lice! Get rid of lice season! <laughs> Goddamn dog, get rid of your lice! Now, as you can see from that video, uh, these five black Israelites were saying crazy and inflammatory things. You know, very despicable things, not just to these Covington Catholic kids, but to anybody that, that, they, that came across them. Uh, they're like this crazy guy on the street who's mumbling, yelling incoherently. It's nothing personal. Just if you are within earshot, you're going to hear some crazy things directed at you. Um, and we have to examine the power differential occurring here. There were only five crazy black Israelites um, who were just rambling on at anyone. They had their uh, stationary black little platform uh, table. Uh, they were carrying these posters and they weren't really straying far away from that platform. Um, so it was people who came across them that had to hear their garbage nonsense. Um, and there were a hundred or so of these uh, Covington Catholic students uh, who were there together as a group. And there was a lot of power in, in, in their numbers. I don't think that they were at any time ever really threatened uh, physically. Uh, by these five black Israelites, although they did have to hear some pretty deranged, very mean stuff from these black Israelites that everyone else was also hearing directed at them as well when they walked across these black Israelites. Uh, and as evidence of the fact, I think that you, we can see that these kids were kind of just having fun with this back and forth, you know, outrageous conversation with these black Israelites. They started to do this cheer, and one kid even, you know, took off his shirt, as we will see right now. So obviously I'm not trying to excuse the actions of the black Israelites, you know, they were pretty crazy. Um, but I don't think at any point they ever posed a, a significant threat uh, to these students, and I don't think the students really felt threatened by it. Uh, and regardless, the black Israelites have nothing to do with Nathan Phillips, the Native American elder. You know, they're not related to each other at all, um, and the, uh, Nathan Phillips, the Native American elder, never tried to instigate or say anything inflammatory to these kids at any point in time. So they're not even related to each other. Uh, but now, the next thing I wanna show you guys is what happens when uh, Nathan Phillips first enters the scene as he tries to diffuse the perceived tensions between the Covington Catholic students and the black Israelites and basically walks in between them uh, with his drum, banging his drums uh, in, in, in uh, what he later says was an attempt to separate the two groups which seemed like it was brewing this impending uh, confrontation. So let's take a look at that now. <laughs> Uh, 
so as you can see, uh, Nathan Phillips, a Native American elder, does uh, approach the MAGA crowd. Uh, he goes in between the black Israelites uh, and the MAGA crowd and stands at the periphery of the crowd. Uh, but then, let's take a look at what happens once the crowd then surrounds him. So, as you can see, that was very painful to watch. Um, in that video clip that we saw, uh, these Covington Catholic high school students surround uh, this Native American elder as he's playing the drums. And they make very humiliating, very derogatory gestures and, and noises uh, that's completely disrespectful. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but at one point, there's even this stick or uh, that projectile that flies in the background in another direction. So it's even a dangerous situation. Uh, they're bobbing their heads in a very exaggerated, you know, humiliating way. Um, and at, at one point, one of the students even um, readjusts the, the maga cat that he has on, which is, you know, sitting backwards on his head. Um, and then they're also making these very derogatory tomahawk chop uh, gestures. Um, I know it's, um, it can be seen at some sporting events. But in the context of what's going on here, you have all these uh, students wearing these MAGA caps. They're surrounding a Native American elder. In that context, making the tomahawk chop directly towards a Native American person is, is a pretty you know, racist and derogatory thing to do. Um, and you know, on top of that, I, these kids, they're not cheering along with respect uh, to this Native American elder. They're jeering along in disrespect. They're humiliating him. They're intimidating him, uh, and and they, they all they all know what they're doing, and it's very obvious to see in this video. Um, now, in this next clip that I'm going to show you, um, it's going to be the uh, the lead up to the actual confrontation between uh, Nathan Phillips, the elder, uh, with Nick Sandman, the the student. Um, and I want you to pay close attention because I'm going to point out during the video that uh, Nick Sandman, the Covington Catholic student, is actually initially in a scene in the, in the background behind a row of students. Uh, you know, he's, he's laughing along, but he's not directly participating uh, in the mocking of this gentleman, not that we can see. But he makes a decision, it seems, to uh, try to get to the front row of what's going on. He, he initially starts kind of in the back, and then he eventually, you know, uh, probably through conscious thought, ends up right in front of the Native American elder. This whole in entire time, the Native American elder is moving very slowly, he's playing his drums, he's taking one step at a time. So it was actually Nick Sandman who positioned himself to be right in front of him. Um, and, but then it is, it's also the Native American elder who makes eye contact with him, and then he does approach Nick Sandman. So let's take a look at that in its entire context right now. So here we first see Nick Sandman. Uh, he's in the back of the crowd, uh, behind a row of his friends, smiling and laughing along. And there he is again. And again. 
but now all of a sudden he's like right in front of the Native American elder. <laughs> So he's smiling because a part of me is thinking that this is exactly what he wanted. He wanted to move to the front row of the spectacle uh, because he wanted to be entertained, it was interesting, um, and he just wanted to have fun. So he wanted this confrontation, but now it seems like it's going to be more than he bargained for. So before, when he was part of the big MAGA crowd, he, uh, Nick Sandrum was just a spectator. He was just watching, not actively participating, maybe just laughing along. But now, now he's thrust into this position where he has to look square in the eye uh, of his Native American elder, Nathan Phillips, um, and confront the humanity of this man that he was previously mocking with all of his friends. It's a cold, hard look at reality. It's not something he wanted and I think hatred is taught it's not something from within and he was he never had this hatred coming out from his heart um, and he just was taught the hatred he was taught to wear the MAGA hat I mean his peers and his parents and his upbringing taught him not to like brown people uh, not to like black people or, or whatever he was taught but now he has to actually look at this Native American man you know and it's real. So to his credit, um, perhaps knowing that his crowd of students outnumbers everyone else. Nick Sandman does try to tell his friend to knock it off. Um, and uh, eventually, Nick Sandman, he does walk away from the confrontation. He's the one who backs down at the very end. Uh, but this whole concept of backing off and, and power, you know, everyone should have realized that these students outnumbering everyone else had a lot of power. And it was pretty much their responsibility to disengage with the five crazy black Israelites and it was their responsibility to show this Native American elder who was walking very slowly, very deliberately, um, show him respect and instead of mocking and jeering him, to have just, you know, respectfully backed off. They, these, these, these kids were wearing these very provocative red maca hats um, and it was inciting a lot of emotions uh, in, in everyone else. And instead of boiling these emotions further, the adult chaperones and the, and the students should have just maintained composure. So I think the reason why there's been so much back and forth uh, for the narrative of this story, you know, other than the fact that the Sandman family hired a PR firm, is that this is a very complex story with a lot of nuance. Uh, it's a very human story. Uh, it's a story full of, of, of protest, of racism, a very American story in many ways, um, in front of the Lincoln Memorial, no less. Um, and I think, you know, there's, there's several takeaways that we should learn uh, from this experience. Uh, one is the whole concept of power. Uh, I think the reason why a lot of the media got things wrong uh, when the narrative was going back and forth is because uh, they didn't really understand the true concept of, of power. They, they equated what the black Israelites did um, and, and the words that they said, which were outrageous, uh, on the same level as what the, uh, you know, the Covington high school students did to this Native American elder when they were mocking him. They're not equivalent in, in any way, shape, or form because the, the whole power differential is there. The black Israelites are five pretty much like crazy people that nobody takes seriously. They have no access to the channels of power in this country. Um, they're just five people, so they're vastly outnumbered. Uh, whereas these Covington high school students, they're, a lot of them become future leaders of America. 
And there are a lot of Republicans now in power who went to Covington High School. So when we see these Covington High School students with their red uh, MAGA hats and ridiculing, mocking a Native American elder, we, the American people, get scared, uh, especially the American people of color, because we see like if these people are doing this now when they're young, uh, what are they going to do later when they have more power? The black Israelites, they're not going to have much power to do, to do anything other than annoy people on the street uh, with their you know, despicable language. But that's about it. But these, these students, they have potential. They will grow up uh, and they will change the world, good or bad. And so that's part of the, the fear and the reason why it resonates with the American people. And uh, when, when, when they do something like this, it's a much more serious matter than when the black Israelites yell some crazy stuff uh, that's, that's homophobic. Um, another thing uh, we can take away from this is responsibility, especially on behalf of the adults. Why were these you know, MAGA students, why were these Covington students allowed to wear those MAGA hats at a public official school function for their school? They went to the National Mall wearing these very provocative, um, you know, many people feel that these MAGA hats are racist. And they were wearing this in public in front of other minorities who may be hurt and offended. Of course, it's going to provoke confrontations with the black Israelites, with, with other with other minorities who are, who are there who feel threatened by that symbol. It's a symbol of hate for many Americans. And the adult chaperones, uh, the, the, the school officials, should have prevented the, uh, these students from uh, endangering themselves and others by going in a group with these MAGA hats. Um, and, and, and the chaperones need to bear the responsibility here. They should have uh, tried to be the ones, instead of Nathan Phillips, the Native American elder, the adult chaperones responsible for these kids should have isolated them from the black Israelites, should have made sure that there was a, the least amount of confrontation possible. And you know, in, when we're talking about responsibility, it's also the responsibility of these parents, of these children, you know, not to teach them to be so disrespectful uh, of other races, of, of other religions, and, and, and people who don't look like them. You know, like, those MAGA hats came from somewhere. The, that culture came from somewhere. Uh, and it came from their parents. Uh, it, it, it came from the, the fact that their school is majority white and they have very little diversity to learn from other races and cultures. So I think that what we can learn from this is these are, yes, these are children. You know, they're in high school. Uh, they have a lot of potential for good or bad, and you know, we need to teach them to be good. This can be a good learning uh, opportunity for them to change, for them to be more accepting of other people. And I don't think that you know, we have the right to just say that these children are a lost cause, they're completely done, they have no future and we should ruin their lives. That's not the way that I feel. I don't think that's the way most Americans feel. I think we believe in redemption. I think we believe in forgiveness. And I think we believe that these children, if you know, taught properly from this point forward, can become productive members of society um, and, and, and do more good than harm when they grow up. I, I believe that. Um, and I think many others hopefully believe that as well. Um, and so I think we can just use this whole, this whole event this very tragic event as a learning opportunity for all of us to grow and to be better. Um, so thank you guys for you know listening uh, to this uh, episode, um, and hope to see you guys next time.